We are live, fellas. Welcome back to a very special edition of the Mecca of Banter podcast. This is a Mecca Moments. Uh, we've done a couple of these throughout the season, and today we are live with Josh Yarrow from the St. Louis City SC MLS team. Um, couldn't be more thrilled to have him, and we'll get to him in a second. But uh, first things first, uh, it's your boy Hen, at Henry Wind on Twitter. Um, as always, it's a great week to be a Manchester United fan. I say it every yeah, week, yeah, and uh, this yeah. week is no different. Um, before we get into Josh, fellas, do you want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, lads. What's going on? It's Hoove here, and Hoover, uh, at Young Yid on Twitter. Uh, more than excited to be here today. I'm so pumped to have Josh on. We're, we're, we've been just also geeked on the team for so long that, you know, talking to the, the first signing, the, the first lad in the, in the dressing room, it's super, super cool. So looking forward to this one. And you know me, Nick Hayflinger, checking in at Hayfee 4. Um, Premier League season's almost over, so your boy is smiling. Um, <laughs> fresh start for the Chelsea boys. Um, but, hey – Big win for St. Louis City, so I'm happy to talk about it. Um, I wasn't here for the last pod to where we got to talk about the thrashing of Kansas City, so happy to hear to uh, talk about that a little as well. Yeah, and uh, rounding it all out, it's your boy Winks, Lucas Winkleman at LCW21 on Twitter. Like Nick said, the Prem's wrapping up, so excited to be able to start talking more about City in the coming weeks and and having our boy Josh on. We are. Uh, we are so, so stoked. Well, fellas, uh, without further ado, welcome to the podcast, all of you. Um, but we are here to speak with the man, the myth, the legend, the former St. Louis to captain in the current St. Louis City first team defender, Josh Yarrow, coming all the way from Ghana to the States uh, to now with the MLS. So, Josh, we've done plenty of research on you. As we mentioned before we started recording, there's an incredible podcast out there from the St. Louis City Voices with you on there where we got to hear a lot about your background. But for those who haven't done the research on you, can you give us a little bit of who you are, maybe where you came from and and where you are today? Yeah, no, I mean, again, thanks uh, guys for having me on, on the podcast. I mean, it's, it's nice to just sit and chat with you guys. Um, but I'm, I'm originally from Ghana. I came to the States when I was 15, um, to a private boarding school in Santa Barbara, California. So came as a sophomore, did three years, and then I ended up at Georgetown for college. Um, and then I was, uh, Georgetown for two and a half years and I got drafted in 2016, um, to Philadelphia Union. So that's kind of how I started in the league. Very cool. The uh, Georgetown's Georgetown's no slouch either. That's a super competitive program, man. Like oh, that, there's it. a lot of a lot of credit from me on that one. But so what what kind of what uh, what attracted you to Georgetown? Um, you know, where did you get your start there and kind of how did that develop you as a player? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, and I, I've told this story a few times uh, when I was in college, and believe it or not, but when I first got contacted by George, and I had no idea where George Chan was or what it was about, <laughs> because I mean, yeah, I, I, I was, I had been in that country, in, in this country, um, at that point for about two years um, on the West Coast, and so I knew a lot of the schools on the West Coast, and and personally, I didn't want to leave the West Coast because coming from Ghana, warm weather, West Coast, always nice and sunny. I was like, I'm not going anywhere that has snow. You know, that was not yeah. interesting. So I was mainly looking at schools on the West Coast because it made sense um, just from my upbringing and, and, you know, in terms of the weather and, and the surroundings. Um, but yeah, Georgetown, it's funny how life works because one of the, in high school, our trainer actually left my high school and started working at Georgetown. And I was pretty high on the recruiting list coming from high school. And so George Sean's coach heard about me, knew that the name of the lady is Beth, that she worked at the high school that I went to. And so she went to Beth's office and I was like, do you know this person? And my high school is really small. It's only 275 kids. And so she's like, yeah, I know him. Like, what do you want to know about him? And so he asked a few questions. She told um, him a lot about me and then I got my George Sean coach got in touch with me and at that point I was pretty much close to making a decision so I kind of started talking to him out of just respect and I, I always said I was going to keep all my options open until I made a decision and so I started talking to the coach and he is hands down one of the nicest human beings I've ever met really good coach really good 
guy. Um, and all the conversations I had with him just felt right. And then again, like you said, Nigeria Shans, it's a great school for what I wanted to study. Um, that was the right place to go. And the program, when I committed, was on the rise. I mean, that year that I committed to them, they made it to the College Cup and lost in the finals. And so it was a program that was up on the rise, and I wanted to be part of something that was being built. And so, you know, with having a coach like him, um, and it's funny because you, when you're in college or when you're looking at colleges and you talk to coaches, they try to convince you why their school is the best place for you. And he never did that. He, he, you know, the only thing he did was ask me what schools I was looking at. And when I told him, he said, man, all those are really good schools. Wherever you go, you're going to do great. And for me, that was really selfless and attracted me to, um, to come into Georgetown and a decision that, man, I'm glad I, 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 I did. Shout yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think, I think that, you know, for a lot of us at that age, you know, being 18, 19 years old, you're really like coming into yourself like as a man as well. You're like, you're growing up, you're figuring out like who you want to be in the world. So outside of like the, the, the game outside of soccer, like what kinds of lessons did you learn about yourself in that time of life being at Georgetown? Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing for me was being flexible uh, and adapting to things uh, because I was like, just like in life with everything, you always have plans. And sometimes they don't work out the way they, you know, you intend it to be. And, and it's okay. Um, it's okay if it doesn't work out that way. Just you have to adapt and you, you have to figure something else out. And for me, having the mindset that I was going to go to school on the West Coast, I was only looking at schools on the West Coast and then, you know, in comes Georgetown. And then clicking with a coach, looking at, you know, a little bit about the school and what I wanted to study and everything making sense. Um and then, you know, the family that I had established in Santa Barbara, going away from that into, you know, hours away into a place that I didn't really know anyone um, was scary, especially being in a foreign country. Um, but it kind of taught me to just, you know, go with the flow and, and figure things out, you know, just be flexible and figure things out as they come. And I think that has served me a lot, you know, served me really well in life, you know, even up to this day. I think you not a... Uh... Uh, not weather being as much of an impact for you is huge, especially coming to St. Louis because you can flip a coin with the weather here. So oh, I'm my very God. happy that you weren't, uh, you didn't fall in love with the beaches on the West coast because you can't find many out here. Right. So shout out to you for that. Um, yeah. Not, a, not until you go to the Lake of the Ozarks. At least. Yeah. Oh okay. God. Have you gone there yet? I, everyone, everyone keeps telling me about that. I, I'm going to have to check it out. One. Bro. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, no, it's it's. Uh, uh, I don't know. Late, it's, it's not the best representation of Missouri. Yeah, but, cool. not, not at all. But if you're if you're looking to party though, and yeah. primarily <laughs> now, primarily now it's more college than anything. But they they uh, have a, they have a couple fun little fun little bars down at the yeah. Ozarks. But uh, it's a good time. Um, real quick on college, just because I'm curious. So we we all played soccer in college as well um defenders at that wing backs and center backs also um but outside of the game again you said you went to this to a place you've never been before where you didn't know anybody apart from having had conversations with the coach what was what were some of the things that you did outside of the game to kind of because mental health is super important especially when you're playing the game at at the level you are and as much as you were what did, what did you do around DC or, you know, around school or outside of the game to kind of just have a good time? Yeah, I think, I mean, one of the things that I did, um, because most athletes, like, you know, um, because you guys played in college, usually tend to stick together, you know, room with athletes, Mm -hmm. everything you do, you're around athletes. And so when I got to college, I tried not to do that. Um, First semester, uh, fall semester of my freshman year, I had a roommate that was on the team. And that was the only semester that I had a room with someone I was an athlete. So I tried to branch out and I, I ended up rooming with people that were, you know, I don't know what the right word for it, but just regular students. And and that for me opened a new world because I got to experience different things. I got to see um, college in a different way. Um, and because, I mean, you're hanging out with your teammates all the time, you practice, you travel, you you do a lot together and just being with them all the time, you kind of, your, your worldview becomes, you know, a certain way. And so, I ended up meeting some of my best friends in college, you know, that through just rooming with um, other people um, and meeting other people and, and learning about other people and cultures and all that. Because again, Georgetown is a really diverse place. And I suddenly took advantage of that. And I tried, you know, whenever I could to be in the community. And I remember I could do the community services my, 
you know, my freshman and sophomore years, just being a community, just to do something different. Because as an athlete, like you said, you know, it's when you're around the game, it's it's taxing. And if that's all you ever think about, it's going to drive you crazy because you need something else. Wouldn't call that a distraction, but something else other than being on the field and playing all the time or being around the game. Where were you when I was in college, man? I could have used that. <laughs> I could have used man. some perspective oh on that goodness. one. Wow. Like, no, for real. Like, that's incredible insight. And I think it shows kind of the character you are and a lot of the stuff we've been hearing mm-hmm. around your support of the community and things like that. Because you hit it right on the head. I mean, the moment you said we all kind of migrate to um, teammates and people yeah. that we just have similarities to. I mean, that's exactly what I did throughout my entire my entire college career. So like I couldn't even imagine of having a roommate that wasn't on the soccer team at the time. So like the fact that you were going out and building those relationships and adding those um, to like a community based like mindset, I think is incredible. So cheers thank to you. you. No, thank you. You, yeah. you know, you hit it a couple of times like in that and it seems to be like a theme like throughout any any articles that are published about you or any interviews you have like community and service are two things that are massively important to you. You know, obviously you have your own foundation, which I'd love for you to share a little bit about as well. But at what point did, you know, was community and service always there from a young age or was it when you, when you came to America, you went to Georgetown, that became more important. I think it's always been a part of my life. Like my family is that way. Um, You know, my siblings, both my parents were that way. It's, I think it's just from my upbringing, uh, but I also played for, I don't know if a lot of people know this, um, but I played for an academy back in Ghana that was also huge on, you know, community and service and, and stuff like that. So I think from my upbringing to the academy I played for in Ghana to um, coming to high school, the motto of my high school was Savons and that's French for pretty much less serve. And so it's kind of, it's kind of followed me throughout my life. And, um, and then Georgetown, you know, men and women for others, it's, it's 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 so going from you know from being young to my academy to high school to college it's it's always been about service and it's helped me a lot because it's something that i take pride in and i uh, you know i've i've always had my whole life people doing whatever they can to make sure that i've always had everything i've needed and wanted and so again my thinking is if you can ever do that for someone else i mean why not I, I heard yeah. you mention it on uh, on the city voice too you said both of your parents were teachers which both of my parents are teachers, so that was maybe about the only thing that I could relate to in our in our well, upbringings. <laughs> it's, it's tough. It's, I mean, I mean, and yeah. you probably know how it is. Like the the bar, it's set really high, and you know, it's you cannot yeah. slack, and and you know, you get good grades. It's expected. It's not like yes. hey, congratulations, you're getting good grades. It's like okay, you got good grades, so what? You you are supposed yeah. to get that, you know, and it's. Um, and then I see them, especially both of them were heads of schools, and I see how they're related to other students and, like, you know, always encouraging and, like, you know, good job. And then it gets to me and it's like, oh, you should be doing more. And I'm like, yeah, is it, uh, that no, B oh, is not oh, good oh. enough. <laughs> what do you want me to do? You know, it's, um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, but it's super helpful because it, 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 mm-hmm. it teaches you to push yourself, you know, never to be content and with, with things. And I think that's a life lesson that anyone could use. So super grateful for, you know, the way that it brought me up and pushing me always because it teaches you that life is not easy, you know, and, and it serves you all yeah. in the long run. So after college, you know, life doesn't get easier. You go to that next level of challenge within your sport, within your career. You get drafted by the Philadelphia Union. Talk to us about that, of what that moment was like, you know, going from the college game to the pro game, the major differences there, and your experience in Philly. Yeah. Because no, we, I mean, never, we never experienced that. None of us got there. Yeah, we never got there. Like, that, that's where we stopped. College is where we that's stopped. That's why we're here, actually. Yeah. That was yeah. the secret sauce. Come on. But the thing is, I mean, if you played in college, that in itself, it's people don't realize, but that in itself, it's an achievement because it's not, I mean, think of how, how many high school players there are in this country and how many make it to the you know, college level. It's not as easy as people think it is, you know, and it's, um, but yeah, I mean, well, thank you, Josh. From, I really appreciate you saying that. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, but, but that's the thing. I think sometimes we achieve things and we, we kind of, think it's not enough, but every achievement in itself, it's, it's something, you know, and sometimes we take it for granted, like uh, until you step back and look at, look at it and you go, wow, this is, I did that. You know, it's, it's not everyone that can say you played in college. It's, it's not very true. Um, but yeah, no, I, I college, college was super fun for me. Uh, my sophomore year, I actually got an offer from the league to leave school. 
but I didn't again because of my parents. Um, I was gonna say, that yeah. was gonna be, there's yeah. no yeah. way they did not yeah. like They that. were, they've always been on my case to get my, my education. So I had to find a way to, you know, get as close as I could to my degree. And, and I, I knew going into college that I wasn't gonna be in college for all four years. So actually I started taking classes in the summer before I started my freshman year. So I had some credits and then every summer I took four classes in the summer. So nice. I, I was in school for two and a half years straight in college. Like from, it was crazy. I would never recommend that any, anyone does that because I had zero time. And then during the yeah. semesters, I always overloaded myself. So I was taking at least six classes every semester. It's horrible, but worth it. So anyways, um, and so sophomore year, I didn't want to leave because if I had left, it would have been impossible to graduate from Georgetown. And I knew that. Um, so I stayed for one more year. My junior year came again. And I said, you know what? Maybe this is the right time because I didn't know if I had stayed for another year. You know, you never know what could happen. So left my junior year, I uh, went into the draft. I mean, I was a pretty high prospect and everyone was projecting I was going to go number one. But for me, it was more of a case where, okay, am I going to end up in the right place with the right team? Because going going to the right place matters. Um, and then the draft itself was pretty interesting because you're sitting there and you don't know where you're going. Uh, you know, you're nervous because again, I, you're thinking, am I going to get drafted? At what pick? Where? And all the thoughts going through your head. Um, and I knew, um, or I thought for sure I was going to go number one. And then when my name didn't get called in the number one spot, I'm going, holy crap, what now? You know, it's, <laughs> um, so I'm sitting down going, okay, well, let's see how this goes. You know, my, and I'm just sweating, just sitting there. Um, and so finally, you know, it, the number two pick, or Philly traded up actually, because Colorado had number two pick, traded up and with a number two pick, Philly picks Josh. And I remember sitting there going, oh crap, that's me, you know, like, I'm up. <laughs> yeah. um, and the whole thing kind of hits you because at that point you realize, okay, well, now I'm a professional athlete because you, I was fortunate that I came as a generation Adidas. So I was, I had already signed my contract. I already had everything. But the moment you get drafted, it becomes real because now you have a team, you know where you're going. And then from there, it was just like, okay, you have about a day to get your staff out of college and move to Philly. And that whole process was just like, from zero to a hundred in, in a matter of seconds, just go, go, go. Um, and I was fortunate to the draft for my class was in Baltimore, which was amazing because I could literally drive from Georgetown and go to work. Yeah. But one of the, hands down, one of the best experiences in my life um, because it's an experience that I think people that get to, get to go through it, uh, should cherish it. It's once in a lifetime experience. But yeah, from that point on, yeah, you are not, you're a professional athlete. You're not a college kid anymore. And you have to figure a lot of things in life, which I found. And I'm like, being an adult, it's fun, but it also sucks because you have to do all these things and <laughs> yep. pay bills. And... Yeah. No one's like making you food anymore. You don't get to just go to like the rec hall and just I like, yeah, get your stuff. Just, yeah, it's in word. college, yeah. you could just go to the dining hall and eat. I didn't have to figure yeah. all that out and find an apartment. And because that was my first apartment, and I didn't really, because I didn't really have a, even have a credit card at that point. Oh, yeah. I didn't sign my lease. Um, I went to the lease and I'm like, if you guys literally want, I will pay you the whole year's rent up front. <laughs> and they're like, no, we cannot do that. We need, you need credit. I'm like, what sort of, like, what? <laughs> yeah. Like, money money the day, I have, I yeah. have the money, but no, we, so I actually had to get someone to co-sign my lease um, when I first moved to Philly, which wow yeah, what that crazy yeah the stuff <laughs> they never wild. tell you yeah, yeah so I, I mean j you know i've never obviously like never been in like a, a first team training i've never been in an mls training does the level just immediately rise from that college level to the mls like in an instant yeah i well i'll tell you one thing because obviously like the higher you move so think of it when you went from high school to college people are a lot more stronger a lot more athletic faster and a lot more smarter and i think one of the main differences that i found coming from college to the pro levels because athletically i was it wasn't a challenge mm -hmm. but it was just the pace of play the speed of play was my god i remember going 
<laughs> you know, it just felt like everything was passing you. <laughs> it's kind of playing a movie and just fast forwarding. You know, like it's it's just speeding and and you're going, oh, okay, because in college it's so much time, and now all of a sudden you don't, and people are seeing things a step or two ahead, and you're going, okay, and so that was the path that I had I had to adjust to, and you know, it, it it took some time, but once you adjust to that, you go, okay, well, because the rules are the same, it's. You know the physicality, yeah, maybe a little bit. You guys are stronger, fast, but whatever it is, like you are, you adapt to that. But the speed of play was the one thing that I noticed right away because guys are quick on their feet, can think quicker, see things before they happen. And most college players don't have that. Or in college, it's a little bit easier because you have time and space. I um, mean, at yeah. the pros level, it's you don't you don't have as much. Yeah, it's like you you always think like, you know, when you play at the college level, everyone was that good at their own right. high school. So it's like you have a combination of all those guys, whereas you get to like the MLS. It's like some of those players were like their best players, like in their academies in Germany or like in Brazil or whatever, world, yeah. or Ghana. And it's like <laughs> yeah. all over the world. And yeah, you're yeah. like, okay, yeah, this, is a, this is yeah. a different level. So it obviously is. after you get to the union, you spend a couple of years at the union. You go to like the USL. You, you have a couple yeah. of years there. I want to fast forward forward all the way until you get the opportunity to come to St. Louis. And as Annie mentioned earlier, you know, you're one of, correct me if I'm wrong, you're the first guy that, that we signed with MLS experience to come yes. into the City 2 team. What was that like? Like, what was the conversation, like the project? Because you've been here for the project from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it, it was great because I, I was in, what year is this, 2023? So 2021, I was in San Diego. Um, yeah. and. I remember, I think it was September, maybe I guess September 2021, I um, coach uh, John Hopworth got in touch with my agent. I was like, oh, this is what we're trying to build in St. Louis. And I think Josh would be great for it. You know, it's so, I mean, it's one of those things that you kind of feel and you go, okay, well, and so I started having conversations. I got on, on a Zoom call uh, with my agent and um, coach Hopworth and we talked, we chatted, and he kind of laid down because it was it was really hard to show someone what was going to happen because the stadium was being built, the facilities mm -hmm. were not built yet, and kind of you know just trying to talk me through uh, what the picture was going to look like when it was done. Uh, but for me, I was like, man, okay, it's a new project. Sign me up. You know, it's it's exciting. You get to be part of something that's being built, and you get you get to see it as it's being built, and you get to experience it at, you know firsthand, and so. I was really excited about the prospect um, of playing here. And so I had never been to St. Louis. So tw end of 2021, I visited the city for three days, you know, really liked it, met everyone. And yeah, and that was it. That was what it. did they have you do when you visited for three days? I was going to say, what I really wanted to do in St. Louis. They showed him. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember when I got picked up from the airport, the person was like, we have two ways we can go. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> So they, they took me, because when you're coming from the airport, I, I, I still don't even notice, but there's one way you can go to get to like the downtown area. But they took me, yep. I don't know the names of the highways, but through kind of Clayton, like that part of town, mm -hmm. which yeah. I understand why it was like that now, because the other way, apparently I've driven it myself and it doesn't look as nice as... Um, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you get, so they were you showing you the up. nice neighborhoods. Yeah, you get picked up. You just, you know, you get picked up. You get shown around the city. Uh, obviously, the touristy things that you do when if if you are visiting St. Louis, you know, on your own. Um, and then show you the arch. Oh yeah, I went to the arch. I was like, man, yeah. I, I, I remember, I remember thinking, man, that's impressive. How do you even build that? <laughs> Honestly, it's about it's, it. Yeah, it's 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 impressive. Um. But yeah, I did all that, the arch, you know, just like Central Western area, downtown, Clayton, like some of the neighborhoods and, and all in the process as well, trying to figure out, okay, where am I going to live? So did mm -hmm. some apartment hunting and um, yeah. And then hopefully for you had credit by then, you know, yeah. you could sign for your own <laughs> yeah, apartment. My, you know, my, my credit was solid at that point. It was, wow, yeah, yeah, it was, it, it was cool. at that point I was like, yeah, I can roll anywhere. You didn't go. need no cosign at that point. I did no, not, no cosign. Not, my credit was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. uh, unbelievable. Yeah, I, again, it's so. Yeah, I, I mean, I came and visited, and I was like, yeah, hey, this is you know, super nice. People here were really friendly. Everyone that I met, so that also made it really easy. Uh, really easy. I think um, that's one of the one of the big sells we have is that 
we are we do find that we are nice people even if you know some of the other stuff isn't as as You're nice <laughs> but you know i kind of piggybacking on you being the first guy so you obviously were the captain of the city two team in in the year that we didn't have you know the the first team available yeah. so in in my mind you know you don't you don't pick up a guy and him not have some really quality leadership experience so what was some of you know the experience that you went through with some of these kids, frankly, some of these young guys that were on the team and guys who didn't necessarily have professional experience, what what was kind of working with them like, you know, through um, that expansion year and not really even having a, an end in sight? Because, well, and he says that because Spurs are looking for someone like that because they're just going <laughs> to have a ton of players without leadership qualities and so that is true he, that is true, no, that is true. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, it's, i mean it was i mean it was definitely an eye-opener because most teams that i've been a part of when i got drafted my first three four five years of playing it was always i was always one of the youngest in, you know, in the locker room and you know you don't have to pick a, take on that role um and all of a sudden you know i find myself there are times when like you know people that have never played professionally before asking questions and i'm like how do you not know this in my mind right? And I go, oh my God, it's, it's your first year playing pro, you know, it's, um, and for me, like things that come with just experience and you just know it just because you've been through it. Um, you know, it took me a while to kind of, for it to click in, in my mind, this is their first time going through it. And you just gotta be patient with it. And I loved it. I loved it because, you know, not only, um, did it give me a chance to help people out because I, when I was a rookie, I remember having two guys in the locker room. Um, actually, three guys in the locker room um, that I looked up to a lot that helped me in a lot of ways and were always there when I needed something. And so, for me, it was an opportunity to do that for uh, for a group that was really young. Um, and in the process as well, I mean, I learned a lot about myself as a person, as a leader, um, and it helped me practice my leadership skills and, and just be better at it um, because I think. When you do that as a form of service um, for others, it's you benefit from it without even realizing. Because you know, I learned to be a lot more patient um, and a lot more encouraging. Because it was a young group, that things were not going to click mm -hmm. immediately. It was going to take time, and so uh, the patience and the encouragement um, part of it. You know, I I've always I've always kind of had that, but it helped me develop it even even more. Um, and also, wonderful group to work with. You know, some of these. Players are still on City too. Some, you know, mm -hmm. uh, with the first team now. So, but it was a, overall a really good year. I really enjoyed the the, the position that I had uh, with the team at that time. It was so fun watching you play. You know, we we we've always loved. Uh, you know, I obviously as, as we've said, we're huge footy fans, and we yeah. came to a ton of your games last year. Like, I mean, as many City Two games as we could come to, we yeah. came to all of them, and it was so easy to see your your uh, leadership on the field and just like the the calmness and the presence that you bring. Oddly enough, what like got this conversation started that we're in today is because during the the Union Omaha game, yeah. you, we were there and we were live tweeting you during the game. You didn't put a single foot wrong the entire game. Like, I mean, your, your reading of the game was just incredible. Thank and you. it was what we came to know from you from last year. And so it's really, it's, it, it's exciting. And what I love is, you know, looking at like the the first team now you all get a lot of coverage by you know the amount of goals that you score and the amount of like you know high pressing counter attacking a uh, yeah. style that you play but the the backbone of it is solid defense i yeah. mean with without what you all do in the back and what berkey does in between the pipes like yeah. I, we're not able to score the goals that we do so it's gone a little underrated in my opinion as yeah. a defender myself um, yeah. so i just want to give you full props for the defensive effort on both yeah, sides but again i mean you guys see it but i think for most fans it's always you know how many goals are we scoring if we win, how many goals mm -hmm. are we scoring? Like on the defensive side mm -hmm. of things, it almost becomes um, an expectation that yeah, you're supposed to do that, you know. And it's and I think if you look at historically teams that are dominant, I mean, take even Man City for instance. Man City is a really good ball possession based team, but defensively, I mean, how many goals they've got? I think it's like 33, 32, 33 goals this season. That's incredible. That's you know that's really yeah. incredible, and, and without your defensive structure, like you're not offensively, you're not going to be able to do much. Because if you're letting in a lot of goals, 
yeah, that, that's that's a problem. And so I think every team that's really good usually, you know, do. and and the modern way of defending is not just the defenders. You know, it's a, it's a team effort now. It's not just it's not just the guys, the four guys in the back, or three guys, or five guys, however many guys you have in the back, mm-hmm. and the goalie. No, it's not like that. It's, it's a team effort now, which I think our team has done it really well so far because everyone, you know, works really hard on 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 the defensive side of things as well. Yeah, it's fun to watch. As a fan, it's so fun to watch each and every game. It's so easy Absolutely. to see the unit uh, going forward, the unit coming back. It's great. Yeah. Um, it's been fun hearing about like your your upbringing up to this point and and kind of like where you've been. But the thing is, is that like on this podcast, we also like to talk about our Premier League teams as well. And it reminded me when you said like you know if you're not scoring goals. Uh, then it doesn't matter. And I, it reminded me of our Chelsea friend, Nick Hayflinger in the corner, oh, a guy man. that doesn't score a lot of goals <laughs> uh, over there with Chelsea. But I'm uh, I'm curious, you know, in, in interviews and in things that yeah. we've read, you're a massive Manchester United fan. Oh, yeah. I want to get your thoughts on <laughs> I want to get your thoughts on the season so far. We have two games left before yeah. the end of the Premier League. How do you feel like we've done? And I'm saying we because I'm a fan too. These guys won't claim them, but I will. Yeah. Um, how do you feel like we've done this season? What are your thoughts? I mean, I think it's been an, a decent season overall. I mean, like I said, two games left. We can jump Newcastle for sure if we take care of mm-hmm. those two games. So finishing third is not terrible. I mean, behind City and surprisingly Arsenal, but <laughs> you know, right there, it's like I that. Would agree. That is a um, surprise. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's all they celebrate over there. Second place. Uh, yeah. Surprisingly, right. Arsenal. Um, but I think I mean the only disappointment is getting out of the Europa League. Uh, and the way that it happened, because winning at home and then tying that game, going away, and the way that it all happened, I think if United was still playing the Europa League and probably in the final, uh, that would have been a pretty good season. But I mean, still, there's still a cup final against City, and so there's still an, there's another trophy. And you know, if United wins that against City and finishes third, I would classify that as a pretty good season. Um, that, that that's a solid foundation to build on for for next year. But we, we gotta check on our Chelsea. I do wanna like our Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea yeah. yeah, you know, guys. Yeah. Like, okay, that's. Nick, do you do you, you, you want to break right the news now. on the transfer rumor over there? Well, that, that's what I was gonna say. You were just yeah. talking trash on Chelsea, and and a lot of uh, the boys have been talking trash on them throughout yeah. the year. Um, <laughs> obviously, we're we're probably deserving of it since we've been in twelve. <laughs> Um, in the bottom half of the table, which is yeah. just unheard of for me. But um, the rumor has just come out that uh, United is looking to sign Mason Mount um, in the summer. And I know that the two uh, United fans on our podcast absolutely roasted Mason Mount when he was at Chelsea um, yeah. Blue. So I just wanted to get your opinion on uh, whether you think he would fit well in a United yeah, uh, I mean, system. May- may- maybe, Henry, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe just that he was playing in the wrong system, you know? On the wrong team. And it might yeah, be I think so too. Uh, I don't think that was it. Henry was playing <laughs> <his> trash <laughs> and that he couldn't dribble. Don't don't backtrack now. Because <laughs> you put him under a good coach. Dude. You put him under a good coach. A lot can change. A lot can oh, change, Nick. Yeah. I, I think I think if he comes to a better team, you know, with you know better players <laughs> around him, with you know all that stuff, it, more it, prestige. It, but I think I mean, don't get Do me wrong. You, it, it could it could it could be it could be a good transaction. He's a good player. He would. You, you would mind. You wouldn't mind a Mason Mount on United. I don't know. I think it just depends I, I, on the price. I want. Like, I want me like. Say it, so I can yeah. say that. You know, <laughs> Josh Henry, says Mason Mount right. to United. Honestly, honestly, I mean, he's he's a good player. So he could. He could. You want to hear first, good. folks? Thanks. He would. Uh, Thanks. He would. He would clean the heck out of Bruno's cleats. That's for sure. For eighty yeah. million dollars. <laughs> Well, so so I, I want your thoughts. It's obvious yeah. that United isn't a complete project right now. We have a we have the right coach, uh, but if you got handed the reins to United's transfer market over the summer, yeah. what do you think that United needs to address first, and who would you go out and get? Apparently, it's Mason. Mount. Think... Apparently, Mason. Mount. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Mason. Mount. I don't know. Um, I think another striker for sure, um, and a striker because. Yeah, I think that's the one position that probably will push for maybe another goalie. Because um, I mean, that's De Gea, a great take. If you want the out train, no, I, I think I think he's an excellent goalie. But 
may, maybe the way that United plays, right? Maybe the yeah. way that United plays because when it comes to shot stopping, he's he's excellent. So if you want a, a keeper that can just do that, then he could be your guy. But if you want someone mm. that maybe can do can start playing from the back, maybe he's not. You know, and and yeah. he's done a lot for this club. He's done a lot for United. But even just just having someone that if he's not there or if he's not playing, because what happens if he gets injured? You know who like who steps in? Very true. You know, and and you need a, Jack you Butland need, apparently. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and you, you you need you need you need a goalie that you know can, in case of something happens, you know. So I would definitely go on on someone else in the midfield that can, because um, look look at this year when Casemiro was out. How much the team struggled, you know. Yeah, so finding someone that true. can that plays his position, that can step in when he's injured or when he's suspended, whatever the reason may be. Because uh, I think whenever he was out, the team struggled. It was it was pretty obvious. So yeah, get a goalie, yeah. a striker, and another another midfielder. They struggled no without Casemiro unless he unless he got a red card because he did do that a couple of times this season. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's choking people. He's you know yeah. doing whatever he does. Yeah, that's, that's and, I mean he he's he's really aggressive and like he's mm-hmm. flying to tackles and you're going no dude no no. no. <laughs> um, and so yeah, I, I will I will give him a little bit of credit. I will give him a little bit of credit because although he's gotten red cards like. Yeah. The Premier League is known to be the most physical league and the toughest league defensively out of all of them. So the fact that he's coming f- came from La Liga yeah. to a league that was going to be, you know, much more physical. Yeah. The fact that he kind of he's known for that in general, but the fact that he, you know, stepped it up maybe a little too much. Um, yeah, no, but, I mean, he, he's 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 done he's done really well, like really well. And like I said, you know, you could see when he was playing and what he wasn't playing, like the difference between. Um, between how the team performed, and so yeah, I'm not saying get his replacement, but at least someone that can, you know, provide yeah, be a backup. the qualities that he brings. Yeah, a, a backup for him essentially. Yeah. Do you have um? So between like a goalkeeper, a backup midfielder, and a striker, do you have names? Do you have like people that you want? If you could choose, Honestly, who is it? It's tough because you, you see all these names. And I don't know how true it is, but someone somewhere I was on Instagram this morning, like Lincoln Neymar of, of all people. Yeah. Yeah. We were just talking about it last yeah. podcast. Yeah. United. And I'm like, that's obviously you don't know how true that is, but that could be interesting. Do you want Neymar? I mean, the guy always brings something special, but is he going to fit well in what the team is trying to do? Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, be injured in a month. You guys have, yeah. He's injured a lot, and you've got good wingers. Like, yeah. not the first position, I'd say, that needs to be replaced. Yeah, for a striker, though, gosh, I can't remember the guy's name, but the, the Napoli striker, what was his name? Oh, Ossiman. yeah, Victor Ossiman, yeah. Yeah, he, he could be a fantastic player for us. I mean, he's he's scoring goals left great. and right, why not? Yeah, <laughs> he could be really good for us. But One of, again, one of the... Um, one of the other United guys couldn't make it on today. His name's Connor. He yeah. uh, he's all in for United getting Harry Kane from Tottenham. What are your thoughts Actually, on Harry Kane? Would would you see him problem. perform well in United? He, I think he would fit right in because look at his work rate and his production rate. It's unbelievable. The guy's not lazy. And <laughs> how does that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> it sure is unbelievable. <laughs> 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 Maybe maybe, maybe, while, while, maybe while we are there, how about we get uh, both Hurricane and Son? Oh, Ooh. Yeah. that would just heart. Andy would take cry. the soul. Like we, yeah, take yeah, the, we wouldn't take the Andy soul out of Tottenham. <laughs> so it's not my never win another game yeah, without those two. Hey, they got an F one track coming to their <laughs> stadium. Oh my We're good. Yeah, so we <laughs> uh, Harry Kane, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I hate saying it. He is a good fit. Yeah. I think. Oh yeah. No, he, he's There's no he's, way around I mean, it. The guy, not just a striker. I mean, he can play as a target striker. He can create. He's the number nine that actually can drop deep and like play and create things, and he does it all. I mean, yeah. and he's a hard worker as well. Like and from any team from watching think, United, yeah, I completely agree. And from watching United, it's almost like that was the number one thing they lacked was yeah. someone to interplay with on the wings, like Rashford, like Anthony, like you know Sancho. There's they do their own job on the wing and they do it pretty well, but there's no, 
there's no combination through the middle and, and the chances are just limited. So um, I hope to keep him, but you know, uh, I don't, could be just I don't me. Think, I don't think he'd leave though. I don't see him leaving. That's the thing. I don't think, I don't think he goes to a premier league club. I think if yeah, he does I, leave, I think he'll go somewhere abroad um, yeah. because uh, Daniel Levy and the, the Tottenham ownership board are, are sticklers when it comes to, the money so um that's what, yeah. that's what i think as well because obviously poach being chelsea's new oh, coach yeah? linked um yep. there's also links with harry coming here and I, I just i don't even think that's gonna happen just based on no shot the top no yeah it, it just wouldn't I, yeah i, I couldn't see it allow it yeah. the uh but i do as the season is coming to an end and i was obviously when we're messaging you on Twitter, you don't know how, or you don't have faces to who exactly is right. messaging you for the backup <laughs> banner. But I was the one who messaged you asking if you thought City or Madrid was going to win that game. And obviously you said City. Yeah, I so, mean, they did win by a landslide that game yeah. and kind of showed their dominance. So I kind of wanted to pick your brain coming into the Champions League final yeah. um, and seeing what your prediction is on that, since that is kind of um, the next big um, game for uh, the sport. Yeah, I, again, I mean, a, a cup final is always, I mean, both teams got there because they did something right, you know, and anything can happen because it's a one game and win or go home. Like, oh, you, we know that best over here at Chelsea. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think as dominant as City has been this this year, it's, it's hard to really root against them. Although being a United fan, I don't. You know, I don't like them as yeah, much. I was going to say, it was, it was interesting how quickly you said City when I asked you. I was like, yeah. are you <laughs> sure that's a United fan? He was like, City for yeah, sure. I mean, I, you know, as much as, as, my, as much as it pains me. Um, but I think they're really dominant, you know, because even look at, look at in games when they make subs. Look who is coming on, you know. Yeah, when they yeah. play their second team and they beat us one nothing. Yeah, I know. I saw that, by the way, that was, no, that was oof. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> yeah, when Kevin um, De Bruyne, Holland, and Rodri are coming in on the 80th minute with yeah. a 1-0 lead, that is hard. Bro, that's scary. <laughs> yeah, but I think I think they're really dominant this year. I mean, they have, they have been the past years, but this year they are they are really dominant. Inter is good because defensively, I don't think they're gonna give up much, right? But City is also a team that you know is gonna at least score a goal. And it's decent. Yeah, yeah I, I think it'll be such yeah. a good matchup offense against defense. Yeah. I think Denzel Dumfries on the right wing back oh, position yeah. is going to have a field day with Jack Grealish. Yeah. Dumfries could get sent off with two yellows. You never know. It's, Grealish could do nothing all game. It's just, it's it's going to be a good one. Yeah. You so do bring I, I up think, a good point, though. It is a cup final. So, like, it is, it's a cup final. Happens. Anything is possible. Mm-hmm. But if you're looking at it just like on paper, like, you'd say City, but I wouldn't count Inter out because, I mean, they've, that defensively they're really solid and they, when they attack they have so many guys up top that can cause mm-hmm. you some damage and so i don't know who is he i was um, gonna say go, going into the city chelsea uh champions league final a couple of years ago you got yeah. i mean people had the same mentality and look look how that happened so it's really yeah, nice of you to bring that up from a couple of years ago know, just to make yourself I, feel better. Yeah, it's yeah, like it was a year to let it go. <laughs> like, Kai Havertz in one I have thing, to scroll. Dude, yeah. I have to scroll to find us on the table, Henry. Give me some. <laughs> Come on. It's so bad. Yes, uh, yes, in the Champions League, maybe two, three years ago, I think it was when they got knocked out. Um, or they've gotten to semis, and then you're like, oh, they, they might win, and then they get knocked out. It's you know, it's 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 soccer. You know, you never know what's going to happen. But I think yeah. City has had the experience. This is what I think is going to help them in the Champions League now, from getting knocked out so many times that now that they've made it to the final, they've learned their lessons, and I think they're better off for it. And so that might add a little bit more to their team than they have probably in, in the past years. So we'll see. I'm really, I'm personally just because it's you know it's a Premier League team. Um, being biased, but I think City has this one, but you never know. Yeah, I I, I kind of agree. <laughs> yeah, I think we all would. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, uh, I I love the fact that you you're coming on this podcast since the most that these guys have talked about United the entire season. So I really appreciate yeah, I, you uh, <laughs> opening them up. I'm like, yeah, it's the first time yeah. Andy Hoover's admitted that Harry Kane would be a good fit at United. Yeah. In- Ever, I'm like, this is great. Yeah, I that, I that must have hurt Hoover to say that. <laughs> I, 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 I hadn't admitted it prior. 
Yeah, but terrible. Wings. I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of disappointed that Arsenal didn't, didn't win it. I, I was actually rooting for Arsenal to win it, to be honest. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, because yeah, you 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 yeah, like we, this. Like we, everyone in our training staff, um, I think yeah, all of them, all our trainers are Arsenal fans. Well, they Whoa. they're all they're all they're all intelligent. It yeah. makes sense. <laughs> um, and I, I yeah, I, it, was, I, it was. I really I really thought you guys had it. Uh, it was. It was close. So did everyone fun. else. We've, uh, we've, we've, we've talked about it, and they, they all strict. If, if I was a City fan, they would have been rooting for Arsenal to win it all. So, like, they take take their reactions with a grain of salt. Yeah. But they we, we've talked about it on several podcasts, and we'll, we'll talk about it, you mm-hmm. know, one that we do in the next couple of weeks about the end of the season. But it was for sure heartbreaking. And, you know, having having some key injuries like Saliba and Zinchenko yeah. towards the end of the season sucks too because Saliba, the way that he, you know, commands our back line and is mm-hmm. sort of that leader on the back yeah. really hurts the way that we can play the ball moving forward. Like we talked about, we know how important the back line is yeah. in terms of allowing everybody else in front of them to play a certain way. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, I you know, this was the first year that a lot that our super young team was contending for a title like this. Um, and I, I think it just got to him a little bit. Yeah. And obviously we had a bad string of games the last couple months and, and dropped too many points. And then, like you said, this is, this may be the best city team we've ever seen under Pep as yeah. well. So this, wow. this of all years was, was not the year to be, to be dropping points when we did, but yeah. I don't know if you saw, but Arteta is being given roughly $200 million to spend in Ooh. the summer on players. So assuming he actually gets that and actually uses it wisely. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of promise with this group now that Odegaard is a year older, Saka's a year older, Martinelli's a year older, all these young guys, you know, that we've re-signed are coming back again. Um, I Just think a bottle year, again. Next so, year's so, going to be cool. Yeah, that's my question for Josh. Do you think, we, we have the argument, did they yeah. overperform or did they bottle it or both? Do you no, think, think that I mean, they bottled the league? No, I think Winks Winks mentioned it because a team like City, if when there's pressure on them, they've been in that position for years now, pretty much the same group. And sometimes experience counts for something because I think if if the roles were reversed and City was in Arsenal's position and they were getting chased, they probably would have held on to it because they have the experience, you know, to to figure things out. And I think what hit Arsenal was that they had a really good team, but in one or two injuries and. The whole team dynamic. They replaced him changes. with Jorginho. Yeah, you know, and what I, I was actually super confused in the in the last game, with the, Thomas Partey as a right back. Yeah, and Kiwi are playing wing backs. I, I don't know. I, I know. I, I, I was. I was no sense. the one, right? Arteta in. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, Arteta's I mean, I, I think guy. I think like you said, wings. It if with. With the experience going into next year, because uh, you guys had a really young team, and I think. It's gonna be a much better year for you guys next year in terms of competing for the, you know, for the, for the title because now they've all had experience and if you ha- if you add in some pieces that could strengthen the squad, I think you go a much longer way than you did this year because I think the one or two injuries that you guys had really hurt you and you didn't really have any replacement uh, for those guys. I appreciate you saying that. No, that's. that's I just think they fun. bottled it. Like I just, yeah, I, I mean, I hear you. Like, I hear you. And I'll die on this hill. It's just there were twelve points clear. clear like yeah. when they were twelve points clear. Like that's the thing. It's like yes, City is who they are. But to be that that clear at the top of the table, I just I don't know if I'll ever be able to see it any other Moving way than to Nottingham Forest yeah, and a must it, win. Yeah, I'm just look, like, look, dude. Look, I did though. Even even like Liverpool this year. You know, like it's 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 tough. Like you go you go through stretches as a club where you know sometimes you're one game one win away from the where the season going amazing and one loss away from it being a shitty season. And I think it's it's in soccer, yeah. like you know this. Fine it's, margins. It's, all, it's all it's all momentum. You tie one game, two games, all of a sudden, oh my god! You know, like you're trending the other direction. And I think that's what happened. You know, it's and then all of a sudden when Arsenal was tying and City gets a win and they go oh my god we can catch these guys and so their momentum is on the rise and i think it's it's it was just there was just a huge momentum shift um, um but I, again i'm not an Arsenal fan but i i, I was I was, I was pulling for you guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, you really sound like a closeted Arsenal really fan over there so chill. Yeah, chill. I, I like this. I did not yeah, want to come on. It. 
City has won what five yeah. times in the last six yeah. seasons. Oh, they don't have any bad. fans. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> well, Josh, we have we have two final questions for you. Um, yeah. Who is your uh, Premier League player of the season, and who is your underrated player of the season in the Premier League? Whew, that's a loaded question. Premier League player, ooh. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe I just woke up an Arsenal fan today. But I think what oh, yeah, dude. has been amazing. Like I, I would, I would put him up there. Um, underrated, I would underrated. Um, but I think Luke Shaw, everyone knows, is good. But I think this this year he's man, unbelievable. Even when he's playing, playing in, the, in, in well. the center, you know. On, mm-hmm. So yeah, for I think Premier League, I would go with Odegaard and underrated. Not that I, I wouldn't think people, most people would agree that he's underrated, but look, Shaw. I, I, I would I argue comeback Not player Holland. of the year. I wouldn't. I wouldn't maybe say underrated. I'd say comeback yeah. kind of because Luke I, Shaw I was fine. I, I, this I, season I, he yeah. was better. Yeah. No. I mean, this season he, he was uh, unbelievable. But in terms of God. If he is not, then who who would you, okay? Let me ask you guys: this. who would you think it's the like underrated player in 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 the Premier League? We got a we got a shout last night. We went to Football STL. Yeah. We uh we played a pickup game last night, and they were saying yeah. Lewis Dunk as the underrated player of the year. And I was like, that's a oh. great shout in that Brighton team. Uh, you know, he's been a backbone of that team for 15 years and they've been playing the best football could, that yeah. we've seen in a long time. So Lewis Dunk was a great shout. I liked that a lot. Yeah. No, that, 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 that could, that could, that could, but it's also, I mean, that's a lot of perspective. Like, I mean, you look at, not saying he's underrated, but even someone like Salah this year that everyone goes, he's not having a great season. You look at his numbers and you go, it's still those a great season. Yeah. Bad numbers. Yeah. Like if anyone else puts up those numbers, it's gonna go, oh my God. You have I would season, love those numbers Yeah, I was gonna say I would love to have that number. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. I most a lot of people in the Premier League would probably, you know, <laughs> would be okay <laughs> with uh with such numbers. I mean it's it's same not the same with Harry Kane. You know, although the, the the team itself is not winning a ton, but you look at his production, <laughs> right, what he, he, he keeps doing, it's unbelievable. Yeah, twenty eight you know, goals in a season and not winning and not winning the golden boot is yeah, yeah. insane. Because of the person who Josh should have said is going to win the player of the year, <laughs> Holland. Like, what are we talking about? Like, the guy's an alien. I mean, yeah. What what he's done? It's unbelievable. Never like, been that, done there's before. There's no taking away from that. There's no taking away from that. But I'm I'm looking at because, again, if you take Holland out of the city squad right now. Oh. Would they still be okay? Josh knows ball. <laughs> like if, if, if you're picking out, yes, they was, would. They would be okay, but reason. I don't think they want to treble. I don't they know, done bro. Yet. They haven't um, won a treble yet. I don't think they do. I think yeah. Holland brings that next level that they needed. Yeah, yeah, but 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 look at those two people, like Odegaard and 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 Holland, like. If Odegaard was I'll not on the Arsenal team, would would they be the same team? Would they have done as even closely as as well as they did? You're right. Yeah. You're right. No, you're right. That's, Holland, a, that's a valid hand, point. You know, look, look, I mean, look at his backup. Not a bad player. It's a World Cup winner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, World Cup that, winner. Julian I Alvarez. But I think, but I, I think if you were going to give an award for the definitely, I mean, Holland, what he's done. But if you're looking at, I, I was looking at it in terms of just like. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. Mm-hmm. Of course. Just the importance to the team, in a way. It yeah. was the but Josh you, Yarrow you know Nose Ball Award. I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, well, Josh, we, we couldn't be more appreciative of you uh, taking time today to uh, to talk with us. Now, um, I, I do want to shout out on the podcast, uh, your foundation. And yeah. can you tell the people where they can find out more information about your foundation? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, where can they find more information? Yeah, I mean, you can find it on Instagram, Twitter. and But if you want to learn more about the foundation, if you go to the Josh Arrow Foundation.org, um, you, you find all the information you need to know about the foundation. And as always, if anyone ever has questions, always can reach out to me personally on Instagram or Twitter. I I will always answer um, um, people, you know, when I get messages. But yeah, check it out. Well, perfect. And, yeah. 
Very well, cool. thank you so much. We uh, we uh, we will be checking it out as well. We want to invite our listeners to make a donation. Join us in making a donation. Josh, you'll have a little donation uh, from the Mecca of Banter into that foundation here today. Thank you, um, thank you, thank you so you. much for your time. And uh, gentlemen, good work. Cheers. Gosh, yeah, yeah, thank you so, so much, man. Amazing on. stuff. Um, Y'all yeah, take care. Hopefully, I will get to see some of you, or if not all of you, in person sometime soon. Um, yeah. yeah you will. Games, you, whenever man. you guys are around. Just, yeah. Yeah. We're Perfect. around. Cheers, everyone. All awesome. Right. Take care, guys.